Hey, hello everyone who listens to this message. My name is Mark. I'm 33 years old. I have a hell testimony that I would like to share. This happened to me in my early 20s, and it was um, more real than anything that I've ever experienced in my life. It was more real than me sitting here and recording this message right now. And it was the most terrifying, horrific, tormenting experience I've ever experienced in my life. So real. Undeniable to me that it it truly happened. And so I'm just going to go ahead and get into a little bit of a backstory before I get into the actual experience that I had. So all my life, I grew up as what I would call a believer. I believed in God. I always, you know, told people that I believed in God, and I truly did. I grew up in the Catholic Church. I lived however I wanted, spoke however I wanted, did whatever I wanted. I, in my 20s, early 20s, I I was doing drugs. I smoked for almost 10 years, did pretty much every drug you can think of, drank, I loved going to the clubs, I pretty much did whatever I wanted, and for some reason, you know, as a a professed believer, I thought that I was right with God, and I thought that if I died, I was going to go to heaven. I, I was a believer, but I never truly repented, I was never born again, and, um, I honestly believed that just because I believed in God, that I was right with God. I could do whatever I wanted and that I would go to heaven when I died, but that isn't true. And the Lord reveals to us in his word, in the Bible, it even tells us, it doesn't matter if you just believe. Even the demons believe that there is a God, and yet they tremble before him. And we have many believers now today, and at the time I was a believer, We have so many believers today that say that they believe in God, yet they have no fear of the Lord. And that's something that's missing from a lot of people, and that was something that I didn't have. I didn't have a fear of the Lord. I I thought I could do whatever I want, and there wouldn't be any consequences for it. I had no fear of the Lord. And even demons believe there is a God, so it doesn't matter if you just believe in God, that's not what saves us. God's word says that we must repent and we must be born again. So all my life, I was living how I wanted, did whatever I wanted. And anyway, one night in my early 20s, I'm just going to get into my experience. And at the time, I didn't know what happened to me because I didn't know the word of God. I didn't know the Bible. So one night I went to sleep And the next thing I know from my memory, I am descending into this pit of darkness. And what I remember as I'm descending into this pit of darkness, it's pitch black, but for some reason, I remember in this darkness, these hands reaching out towards me as if trying to reach out and grab me as I'm descending into this pit of darkness. And the next thing I know... I'm suspended in this pitch black darkness and I'm just writhing in this pain and I'm just in this sheer and utter pain and torment consumed by this pain and this torment and I I tried the way I try to describe it to people is you know I'm just flinging around and writhing in this pain kind of like you know when you're fishing and you put an earthworm onto the hook and it's just flinging around you know, just imagine if that earth, we don't know what type of pain that, you know, worms feel. Just just imagine if, you know, their sensation of pain is much more intensified and heightened um, compared to what we feel. You know, a hook is going into them and they're just flinging around in pain. And I'm just suspended in this complete and utter pain and torment and anguish and agony. I'm just consumed by it. And another way I try to describe it to people is... I don't know if you've ever experienced like an intense kind of poison ivy, like like an itch or a rash on your skin. Like I remember 
when I got my first tattoo before I was born again, I had a bad reaction to the ink. And <clears throat> I broke out into this intense rash and itch. It was so itchy, nothing could relieve that itch. Like, it doesn't matter how bad I would scratch or it wouldn't go away. It was like a poison ivy, I would imagine. And so this pain, I try to describe to people this pain that I experience in this place. Imagine that you have this itch. It's on your forearm, but it's not on the skin. It's in, in the bone. It's so intense. It doesn't matter if you took a knife or a dagger or whatever, and you were digging into your skin to try to reach that bone to relieve that itch, but nothing could relieve that itch. Not even for a moment, it could not be reached. But instead of an itch in your bone, imagine your whole body is consumed by this, down to your core, down to your soul. And instead of an itch, it's the worst type of pain that you've ever experienced in your life. I don't know if you've ever experienced some kind of intense migraine to where you thought you would die, some kind of intense cramp, or you got, you were burned, or you were in some bad accident, or something that was the worst type of pain you've ever experienced in your life. This pain that I felt does not compare to that. Imagine that multiplied by a million, and it's a pain that should instantly kill you here on earth. If you experience that pain that and torment that people experience in hell, that I experience in hell, it should kill you instantly. But in hell, you're in a place where you cannot die. So this pain that consumed me, it's, uh, it's every type of fear, pain, migraine, depression, every type of pain that you can think of that you can experience here on earth, you are consumed by it in this place. It's a place where there is no love, no relief, no hope. It's completely void of all of those things. So that pain and torment that I feel, it, it doesn't matter if I clench down on my teeth to where my teeth shattered trying to relieve the pain. It doesn't matter if I tried to if I bit down on my tongue and my tongue fell off to try to relieve that pain, to try to counteract that pain, there was no relief. There was nothing that would relieve you. The pain was unrelenting and ever increasing. There wasn't even a half a second, not even a millisecond of relief of this pain in this place. In fact, every second, every millisecond, every half a second was an increased level of pain it was ever increasing forever and um in this place aside from the pain and the torment that there was no relief the two worst experiences about this place the two worst things about this place that i could remember feeling and experiencing was one the hopelessness and two eternity this was a place of complete hopelessness. There was no hope. Once you were in this place, there was no hope of you ever getting out. There was no hope um, that you would find any relief. There was no hope that you could escape. Here on earth, if you experience some kind of pain or tragic accident or anything, or even depression or anything, there, there's hope for it to get better. There's hope. There's a hope. There's a way out of that. There's, there's some way out of it. And um, in this place, there is no hope. It is completely void of hope. It is sheer and utter hopelessness. And the other thing that was the worst experience of this place was etern it was for eternity. I knew that there this would never end. There is a you I can't explain it um in earthly terms, but I experienced what timelessness and eternity feels like eternity exists. The Bible speaks of this. God talks about this. And in this place, this is a place of eternity. Here on earth, we live in a place where time exists. In this realm that I was in, which was much more real than the realm that we're living in right now, there is, there's no time that you can feel the sensation of eternity and you know it will go on forever and ever and ever and ever. People who are in hell, people who have been dead for 30 days for a month they have been in hell for 30 days straight people who have been dead for 100 years they've been there for 100 years experiencing this torment 
that is ever increasing. That people have been dead for a thousand years and who will be dead for a million years. You cannot escape this place. And it goes on for eternity. That's what the Bible tells us. It is eternal death. That is what this place is. So in this place, I was dying, like I said, here on earth. If, if we were to experience that pain, it would instantly kill us. We would be dead. In this place in hell, you are eternally dying. You are dying forever and ever and ever and ever with no end. There is no fulfillment of death in this place because hell itself is eternal death. You are dying forever and ever and ever and ever. It's a place completely void of life, of light, of God, of all things good. And um, by the grace of God, I woke up. I, I came, I believe I truly died in my sleep. Back in the day, I used to have a sleep apnea. I used to have a snoring problem. And many people die in their sleep. And I truly believe that I died in my sleep. And by the grace of God, I came out of this. I came back to life. And the next thing I know, I'm sitting halfway up in my bed in complete shock and terror. And, you know, trying to wrap my head around what happened. And also, I, I, I can't really explain this, but because I've never experienced this at any other time in my life. But I had a strange sens sensation in my body. What I can only describe as possibly maybe um, me coming back to life my my bodily functions returning to normal my bl my blood throwing pumping through my veins and me coming back to life and I was in complete shock and fear and terror of what happened to me I couldn't explain it it was the scariest thing I've ever experienced and it was so real it was not a dream um like I said I've done so many drugs back in the day and I know what it's like to have those experiences where you know you're tripping on a drug this was not a drug a trip I was not on drugs at the time any time for a long period of time before this or after this I was completely sober at this time and I know what happened to me was was very real and I, I couldn't explain it because at the time like I said I didn't know the word of God and it didn't meet my carnal mind's interpretation of what hell would be like and so I couldn't explain what happened to me I wanted to say that it was some type of hell but it didn't meet my mind's description of what hell was like so um, I didn't really know what to call it so I remember the next morning and I didn't want to tell anyone about this normally all my life I, I've had dreams and normally I would share them with my mom or other people and um, that's just something that I would do. And I was afraid to tell anybody about this. I was actually embarrassed by what happened to me. I couldn't explain it. I didn't know um, how to tell it to people. I thought maybe people would think I was crazy. But the next morning, I didn't want to, but I felt like it was so terrifying that I had to tell somebody. And I told my mom, and I remember she just looked at me with these big eyes and said, Oh my gosh, that sounds like some type of hell. And that really scared me because of that experience, I don't, I don't know what else how else to describe that so but after that I did my best to try to like brush it under the rug and forget about it because it was a very real very terrifying experience and I felt every bit of it so anyway fast forward I don't know how how long after this experience that I decided to read the Bible and I started reading the Bible and I remember reading in the Bible this place in the Bible this description of hell where, where God would cast people into hell and it said they will be cast into outer darkness and there will be weeping and gnashing of teeth. And I knew in that moment that that is exactly where I went. I knew without a doubt that that was the exact place that I went. And I knew that I experienced hell. It was exactly my experience. And the Bible describes this is the place where believers, servants were cast into. So... You know, for the longest time, and it, even after realizing that, I still, you know, I still lived how I wanted to live. I, I was still going to the clubs, smoking, doing whatever I wanted. And this experience terrified me, but it wasn't what, you know, turned me around and what led me to be born again. It wasn't until the future 
where I really started to seek the Lord. And maybe about like eight years later after this experience, seeking the Lord and changing and really repenting and I was praying to God and I was like, you know, Lord, I really believe what happened to me. I really believe this experience that happened to me. I really believe that this was hell, but can you give me confirmation? Can you show me, can you somehow confirm this to me that this is truly what I experienced? Anyway, shortly after that, I prayed that prayer. I was seeing that other people had hell testimonies on YouTube and I ran into probably one of the most famous hell testimonies that I've ever seen of Mary Kay Baxter and where the Lord appeared to her and took her to different compartments of hell through uh, many nights. And she described how the Lord took her to this one compartment of hell. She saw many different compartments of hell, but the Lord took her to this one compartment of hell where believers go, people who profess to believe, so they knew that there was a God, but they never repented, they never turned away from their sin, and they died in their sin, and that was me, and she described this place, you know, God took her to all these other compartments, but when, she said, when they descended in this compartment of hell, they descended into this darkness, and as they descended into this darkness, hands were reaching out towards them, and this was exactly the way that I entered into this place. And so when I heard this testimony, this was confirmation to me. And this was shortly after I prayed for the Lord to give me confirmation about this place that I went to. And then shortly after that, I started seeing other people's hell testimonies. There's other people who have hell testimonies where they were cast into outer darkness and, it, and they're on YouTube, they're sharing their exact same hell testimony, the exact same things that I experienced in this place. Other people have the exact same hell testimony as me, and these people have actual proof and documentation that they actually died. Some of these people died for 30 minutes. There's proof that they were, they were clinically pronounced dead in the hospital. And so the Lord confirmed to me that this, and I, I knew in my heart and I knew in my spirit, without a doubt that this is where I was, that this was my experience, but the Lord confirmed it with me, with these other people's testimonies. And hell testimonies are biblical. There's a lot of people who say hell isn't real, these hell testimonies aren't real, but hell testimonies are biblical. And the first one that we have a testimony, um, historical biblical proof of, is the testimony of the rich man and Lazarus. And through this testimony that I have, this experience, I, I have a greater understanding of, you know, what heaven, through my, I, I didn't get to experience what heaven is like. I know a lot of people who have hell testimonies also have a heaven testimony to go with it. I don't have that, but through my hell testimony, I have a great understanding of what heaven must be like, because what I learned is in this, we live in this realm where we're experiencing both life and death at the same time. That's the realm that we live in. We are both living and dying at the same time in this realm. We're experiencing life and death. So up here, if we look up here, that we have heaven. And then all the way down here, there's hell. And we're in this realm in the in-between experiencing both life and death in hell in my experience and what the lord shows us in his word it's a place of eternal death it's completely void of the presence of god and what is what is god in his presence in him there's light there's life there's hope there's love there's peace there's joy there's all good things and hell is a place that is completely void of the presence of God, where God sends the people who reject him, reject his word, and reject his son. And in hell, there's n it's completely void of life, hope, love, peace, joy, kindness, anything that's good. So hell is a place where none of those things e exist. You are pretty much suspended in a place of darkness, hopelessness, pain, 
the Bible calls, describes as weeping and gnashing of teeth, where the tormentor is, where the worm does not die. It's, it's a place completely void of life and goodness. So it's death. It's eternal death. And heaven and hell are eternal. So if heaven is a place where it's just life, joy, hope, goodness, peace, and hell is a place of death, torment, pain, horror. And so we live in this realm in between both. We're suspended in a realm that's in between life and death. But we are right now experiencing both life and death. And when we die, we're going to slip into eternity. We go to one of two places when we die. It's either heaven or hell, eternal life or eternal death. So through my experience, I understand in heaven, it's the complete opposite of hell. It's eternal life. Every second you are becoming more and more alive, you are blossoming more and more in life, and you are living forever in peace, in the presence of God, in peace, in love, in hope, joy. Every second you are experiencing a heightened sensation of life, a heightened sensation of joy, a heightened sensation of peace, all things that are good. So in heaven, you're becoming more and more alive for, for eternity. You will never die. Nothing dies in heaven. And in hell, you were becoming more and more dead for eternity. There's no fulfillment of death in hell. And um, Jesus preached more about hell in his ministry than he did about heaven because of the seriousness of that place. And the Bible says it would have been better for a man to have never been born than to end up in hell. Everyone who is in hell wishes they were never born and they curse the day that they were born. And we see in God's word, it shows us that for if God did not spare the angels in sending them to hell, how much more then would he send man to hell? His word says that he created us men a little below the angels. And hell was originally created for the devil and the angels who turned against him but God also created man who then also turned their backs on him so now this is a place where man will also go many people have experienced different compartments of hell like demons tormenting them I experienced the outer darkness and even that was so unbearable that I wouldn't wish hell on anybody not even my worst enemy not even on Hitler but Hell is the just punishment of a righteous God on those who reject him and do not repent. It is eternal separation from God. So the Lord shows us, you know, it's not just by believing that there is a God. Even the demons believe that. We must repent. God says that you can only get to him. You can only get to his kingdom. God created heaven. It belongs to him. God's word says that we can only get to heaven through his conditions he created it there's rules to get into his kingdom and he said there's no other name by which man can be saved only by the name of jesus no man can get to the father except through jesus and we have to repent he said unless you repent you will all likewise perish and perishing means dying and going to hell and he said, I take no pleasure in the death of anyone perishing and going to hell, but rather that they should repent. His word says that many will say to me on that day, Lord, Lord, haven't we prophesied? And these are believers. He said many believers, many people will say to him on the day of judgment, haven't we prophesied? Haven't we laid hands on the sick and healed them? Haven't we cast out demons in your name? And he will say, depart from me, you who work iniquity. So he's going to cast people, people who are believers, people who are operating in the gifts of the spirit, people who were laying hands on the sick, people who were casting out demons in his name, people who were healing people, prophesying. But you know what? He said, unless you repent, you will all likewise perish. He's, he will say, depart from me, you who work iniquity. That means you who practice sin. So it doesn't matter if you believe, you must repent. So there's people who are ministering to people on the streets every day who will 
be cast into hell. It doesn't matter. There's people, there are pastors who are cast into hell every day. There are people who think they're right with the Lord just because they believe and they're doing all these good things. And But God says, you must repent. He says, depart from me, you who work iniquity, you who practice sin, or you who are unrepentant. So it's a very important thing. We must repent. And the Bible says, God says, Jesus said, unless you believe that I am he, you will surely die. We must believe that Jesus is our Lord and our Savior. We must confess that. We must believe that in our heart. There's only one way into heaven. It's not through Buddha. It's not through Muhammad. It's not through Krishna. It's not through your own works. It's not through, it's not through any other way but through Jesus. Jesus as your Lord and your Savior. God's word says that the Son, Jesus, is the visible image of the invisible God. It says the Son is the visible image of the invisible God, preeminent, supreme ruler over all creation. All things were created for him and by him. And he is the way, the truth, and the life. And is it is only through him. There is no other name by which man can be saved. And there's no way to the Father other than through Jesus Christ. So those are very important things to know. God said you must be born again. You must be changed. You must be a new creation in Christ. You must put off the old man and put on the new man. You must turn away from your sins. You must come into alignment with the things that God says. You have to, there's a lot of unlearning that you have to do that the world teaches people, that religion teaches people. But God says that um, you must be born again and you must repent. You must turn away from your sins. You have to come into alignment with the things that he says. It says, count every man as a liar and let the word of God be true. So everything that man has told you that you've taught, you have to say, okay, I'm going to just, you know, pretend everything that I was told is a lie, and I'm going to go to the word of God, and I'm going to believe what the word of God says as truth, and I'm going to live by this way. And you have to endure until the end. You know, there's people who think just because you you believe that there's a God, that that's all it takes, and you'll go to heaven. That's not what God's word says. And, you know, there's these big mega churches. There's these youth pastors and these pastors of these mega churches. And there's these popular people on YouTube preaching that once you believe in Jesus, all your current sins and all your future sins are forgiven. They're, they're over here preaching once saved, always saved. And that is a lie from the pit of hell. God says you must endure all the way to the end. You don't just say one prayer and ask for forgiveness and then boom, you're saved. That's not how it works. You have to endure in this life all the way until the end. Every day is a new day for you to repent. And as long as you are alive, there's hope for you to repent and be saved. And you must live this way up until your death. Your salvation is not sealed until you Leave this earth and you must repent. You have to put away your sins. God says, depart from me, you who practice sin, you who are unrepentant. He's going to say, I don't care if you were prophesying in my name. I don't care if you were casting out demons in my name. I don't care if you were healing the sick in my name. Um, look it up. It's, it's in the Bible. And he also says that even if you're lukewarm, that doesn't cut it with the Lord. He says, Many will be spit out of his mouth and into hell for being lukewarm. He said, I'd much rather that you were either cold or hot, but even if you were just merely lukewarm, you will be spewed out of my mouth. That that doesn't cut it. So I pray that whoever listens to this message takes it to heart, that you take it before the Lord and you pray. Eternity is a long time to be wrong. And you must receive Jesus as your Lord and Savior. The whole Bible is about Jesus. The book of Revelation is a revelation of who Jesus is. Anywhere that you see the name, the Bible talk about the Son or Jesus, the Bible says the Son, Jesus, is a visible flesh manifestation of the invisible God. So 
the Lord God Almighty is invisible. He's a spirit, but he manifested himself into this world, into the flesh, to be the perfect sacrifice for all of us because he loved us so much. So I pray that whoever hears this message takes it to heart, that, you know, maybe you go onto YouTube and you look up other people's hell testimonies. Hell is real. It's eternal. And it's, eternity is a long time to be wrong. We must repent and turn away from our sins. God is serious about sin. Sin separates us from God. And God is holy. And he said, be holy for I am holy. And his standard of holiness is very high. And we must repent. And we must make every effort to strive to enter in that narrow gate. God says we must strive. So if you are not striving, if you're just going about your day lackadaisical, just content, lazy with where you're at, and you're not striving to, to do better and to be better, not striving for holiness, not striving to enter in. He said strive to enter into that narrow gate because narrow is the way, is the path that leads to salvation, and broad is the gate that leads to destruction. Most will go to hell. That includes believers. That's God's word. So God bless you all. Jesus bless you all. I pray that whoever hears this is be filled with the Holy Spirit. Seek God. You must have his Holy Spirit. It's his Holy Spirit that leads and guides you in all truth and understanding. So it's very important that you have his Holy Spirit. Repent. Ask him to forgive you of your sins. Pray that he baptize and fill you with his Holy Spirit because his Holy Spirit is who's going to lead and guide you in all truth and understanding. He's going to lead and guide you on that narrow path. So God bless you all.